you today. Well, I'm back at making another video. And this video is called Five Things to Do If You Want to Start Tying Your Own Fishing Flies. Alright? So, <clears throat> the first thing you probably need to do is decide on what you need and how you're going to go about tying flies. You know, they have beginner kits that you can buy and, and uh, the tools in these kits will get you along uh, you know get you along to, to a place where you can start tying and uh, you know get you on the water and, and start throwing some flies at fish uh, you know and start getting you some catch time which is cool man because there's nothing like catching fish on something some flies or some you know some flies you make and uh, <clears throat> so you know you can get like a, a, a beginner's kit and that'll have like a, a, you know like a vice in it and I, I had this one vice that I bought in, in an Orvis kit back in the 90s after I, I I was in the army and I took up fly fishing again I went fly fishing up uh, on the East Coast I, went, I tried to go trout fishing, but uh, I ended up catching smallmouth in the river, which was fine because I, I, I think the only fly that I had was I bought was some popper. I, I didn't even know how to, yeah, I didn't know how to fly fish. So, <clears throat> so I bought some uh, poppers, some woolly boogers, and I went to this trout stream. It was either in North Carolina or Virginia, but I ended up catching like smallmouth. But my intention was to go after trout, but I was just ignorant. So after I got out of the army, I didn't, you know, I, I had uh, borrowed a fly rod up in uh, when I was in the army <clears throat> after some sh short instructions. But then after that, I went. So, so you know, these kits they have like the real, they have like a real basic tool set in them, and then you know, and you get some like chenille and stuff. But I have I've I got this uh, peak vise and it's a rotary vise and I also upgraded some of my tools. I don't think I have any of my original tools. I may still, but you know they're, they're, you can definitely upgrade in the tools that you know like you like there's those uh, thread botkins that you can uh, I think that's what they're called. But you can like they have like a tensioner on them and you can like tighten up the thread you know to where it won't like you know or loosen it. Just depending on what you want to tie. Um, and, you know, and that's nice. And so that that's like number one is just like to get some tools, you know, to, uh, you know, and some materials to tie with. You know, like, you know, chenille, feathers, hackle, bucket, bucktail, whatever, lead, uh, wire, uh, dumbbell eyes, um, beads. You know that you can put on them, and so you know that that's kind of like number one. You know the five things you should do to start tying. Number two <coughs> would be decide to tie. Decide what to tie that that you have the ability to tie, right? So you wouldn't want to go to some complex fly. So most people start out with like woolly woolly buggers, all right, woolly worms, whatever, it's just a, a streamer hook that has some chenille, some hackle, and usually some lead wire up underneath, and, uh, you know, with the marabou tail, and, and most people tie those, and, and those are great to fish with, you know, you catch all kinds, like, like, I've caught, like, just tons of bass on those, and, uh, so, you know, you have to, you know, you, it, when you decide what you want to tie, you have to decide if you have the ability to tie. And that that's just basically, you know, comes with practice. So you got to tie something simple. I mean, just learning how to wrap the thread around the hook is, is challenging. And, uh, you know, I mean, that can give you difficulties. And then learning how to use the tools. You know, learning what they're used for. Uh, different glues. Um, so... You know, just uh, in the, you know, if you're, along with deciding what you're going to tie, um, like uh, decide decide um, 
the size and what depth you want to start at because that kind of dictates the materials that you need you know so like i love six hooks and eight eight hooks for streamers all right for fresh water um salt water i like to go to a four up to a one on okay for for like the bays okay and and then i go kind of go from there and it, and th those size seem to be uh like uh about the size of like the, the bait around there like the bait fish or like the shrimp or whatever depending on where you're fishing um so you know you want to you want to choose uh, according to your level so if you're you're a beginner you want to uh, find a simple effective fly pattern that you can tie okay I mean because that's the best usually the simple flies catch just a lot of fish you know but like your more your nicer flies uh, they tend to fool the bigger fish so um, that's what you're gonna you know and also also you know you, you want to match up um, your, your, your like size of your your you know your hooks and the weight of your fly uh like uh with with your fly rod with your with the equipment that's going to be casting it so you wouldn't want to throw a big old deer hair bass bug on like a three weight you know deer hair bass bugs are typically best thrown on like a six but possibly you know but most of the time like a seven or an eight so you know, you gotta you gotta kind of factor that in to when you're deciding uh, on this. Here, hold on. All right, so <clears throat> um, after you've decided what you're gonna tie, you want to uh, decide how you're gonna execute um, tying the fly. You know, so if, and, and typically uh, most flies are tied from the bend of the hook. Okay. Uh, to, to to the eye of the hook, right? To the to where you tie your fishing line in, right? And so, mo most flies. And, and and so what you do is you like okay. So like if you're gonna put it like a bead, if you're just tying like a bead head, uh, uh, woolly bugger, okay. Well, you're you're gonna wanna you know put the bead on. That's the first thing you're gonna do. And then if you want some other weight, you use some wire and you wrap the wire around there. So that 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 so that's kind of starting at the eye of the hook. And then after that, you make your like thread dam, which is next to the eye of the hook, right? To, and, and the thread dam is to keep like those two pieces of weight near the eye of the hook. And and you just kind of do this wrap all the way to the bend. But as far as like uh, you know like your hair and your material, that typically starts at the uh, at the curve of, of, of the hook, the, you know, near, you know, when the shanks starts at near the bent, the, you know, the, you know, like right above the hook point. And so that's what you want to do. Uh, you know, you, you, you want to figure out a plan of action on what you're going to tie, you know, typically if you, you know, uh, like here, here's this, uh, little, uh, bass popper. Okay. I, I tied this. Okay. Now, with this, let's see, let me this. with this, I, uh, I, I, you know, these heads, I had to melt the hole into the middle with like a little bodkin, a little sharp thing. Let's see. And, uh, and you know, because there, there wasn't a hole for the hook to go through, okay? So I, I had to make that hole, okay? And, and once I did that, I kind of put the head onto the hook, okay, onto the hook, and I decide, you know, and I kind of marked where the head came to, and then I then I pulled it off and I start because it was kind of easier, but but totally not necessary. Um, and then I start, then I tied all my all, all this material here on, and uh, you know before I put this head on, and. Once I put, you know, once all this material near the bend of the hook, near near the point, was tied on, then I fastened the uh, the the the, uh, the popper head on there, and then kind of uh, dolled it up. And like this one, there was no consideration on it. This is just like a like a perch pattern. 
I threw this on my eight weight, had some largemouth bass. It just, I, I tried to mimic these bait fish. It just didn't work that well, but that's okay. But I, I, I started, you know, like I, this one's got a weed guard. <clears throat> so that was like one of the first things I tied on near the, near the bend of the hook, right? And then I tied the rest of the material on from, from here forward, right? And then I trimmed it up, right? And I whip finished. And, uh, you know, and then I, uh, you know, to kind of in the shape of a bait fish. This might work in the spring, I'm thinking. But it didn't work late summer. Um, so <clears throat> that's what I did. Now, here, here's an example of a fly that I tied. I don't really like this fly. It was like a mistake. But it's got the bead head on the front. like a, It looks like a little fish head, but that's kind of like a bead head. And I, that, that was the first thing that I had to put on. Or, well, not on this one, but I'm just saying it would be if you did. And you'd have to put it on and work it work it around the hook and then get it at the head. But And then here's a real simple fly. Um, it's a, a bend back. And it's just like to, for a little bait fish down, that I throw down at the coast. <clears throat> so... You know, so you want to think about how to execute to tie it, okay? It, take, it takes some time to execute these things. These topics are like four minutes a piece. Um, and then, like, probably the uh, fourth thing you want to do is, is, you know, you want to ask for advice. And, you know, there is tons of information via the Internet. When I started tying, you, you had to read a book and go, Duh, what are they trying to say? You know? So, uh, you know, so you got to ask for advice. And there was a guy at the, at the fly shop that was, that they had downtown San Antonio and, uh, that the, it's called, I think it's called the tackle box, but that guy knew how to tie flies all kinds. And so he was kind of a good source to kind of do, to, to go to, to, to learn how to tie flies. Um, and then I went to like, this was all in the nineties. Okay. When I started and I abandoned fly fishing for a while okay I, I i just didn't go fishing that much at all and uh I, I i was a hunter okay i like to hunt too um so you know i went and asked for advice on how to tie flies and i and i read books and i looked at diagrams videos you know there's even <clears throat> like uh i got an email by this guy and uh and i'm, I'm if i if i remember i'll put his link down in the uh, comments but if you need be uh, he gives an online course on how to tie flies and I've never taken it on online uh, fly tying course but I have taken other online courses like I took this kettlebell course because I was trying to lose some weight and I just couldn't like bottom line is 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 uh, you know don't diss asking for help or paying for help I mean because you know this is your hobby all right, you know, uh, when you when you tie flies, this is your hobby, and you're just getting involved in your hobby. That's all you're doing, and it's a good hobby. It's a fun hobby. I ask this is your hobby, and, and invest some money in it, and, and you know, and and you'll learn to respect it and cherish it. And you're like, oh wow, it's a cool hobby. Like I know a fly to, a fly tire on online. You know, he posts videos about his bamboo fly rod catches. You know, like he just posted one, and then right after that. He posted a video about his, uh, about it. He, he likes model trains and he's got all these cool looking model trains, you know, that are in his house. But, um, you know, and so finally you're, you're going to need to tie the fly. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and let this one run a little bit. You're going to just need to tie the fly. And, and so that's number five and, you know, and you're going to want to add, like if you're going to do weight, you're going to add to, add the beads. That's usually that's like the first thing you do. Put some lead wire on. It's going to be the first thing you do. Uh, you know, if if you're going to make like a weighted fly, you know, like a dumbbell eyes, and you know, and you want to you know proportionally put those those weights where they need to go. Like dumbbell eyes, typically you know go about a third of the way back of the shank. Okay, for like clouds or minnows. And, um, you know, and beads go next to the eye of the hook. And then you put a little bit of lead wire, you know, 8 to 15 wraps. And that you, know, you push it up against the, the, the little bead. And, uh, you know, and 
then you like tie and you 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 do a, a thread bed and you know and someone just informed me the other day this is what prompted this video is that I, I I was I was doing it wrong okay I was I was tying I was wrapping my thread wrong you want to go below and away and then back over all right and and that's that's what you do and then when you whip finish you go under and then you in the whip finish and that and you know and when I started like I did it, it was a little awkward at first because I was going just going over the hook and probably putting too much thread down you know but my my fly I, I was having fun tying flies wrong but they still caught fish so it wasn't that wrong okay um you know so uh you know when you when you th use the thread you know go up underneath the hook and then back over away from you right away from you and then use the the whip finishing tool away from you you don't even have to do you just got to make sure that that the wraps all go and you know and i think on this fly i i ended up using a lot of thread okay and or, or used a lot less thread and then um you know so so that's like with your like basic weighted flies now when you're like laying down some kind of fur and you know uh, you know, you put, you know, with all flies, you kind of make a tail or whatever, <clears throat> and that usually indicates like some sort of hair, synthetic hair. But when you get to like the head, you know, if it's not a weighted fly, if you're using like deer hair or like some poly fur, or some wool, or something, you're gonna you're gonna want to, uh, you know, make sure that you symmetrically put that stuff onto the hook. Meaning, if you put a clump on the top. Uh, well, then there needs to be, some, you know, an equal amount on, on, on all sides of the hook, right? And, uh, you know, and so, and that, that ends up making a nice, full, tight, packed fly with any fur that you use, whether poly fur or deer hair. You know, you kind of want to pack around and, and spin the hair all the way around the hook you know, and, and lay a couple of clumps down, lay one on top of the hook, side of the hook, side of the hook, and then possibly on the bottom. Okay, and then you do that and you work your way forward to the eye. Okay, here. Okay, so like when you're, you're, you're laying that fur down and, and, and you've gotten these various clumps, you know, and, and what you're aiming at is, you know, you want to symmetrically apply your material. So when you trim it, you have a better chance of making a symmetrical fly. For like divers, you want them to kind of just chug down equally and to the bottom, and, and, and you know, for those deer, deer hair divers, and you want that 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 ridge that that gets the gets the, the the fly down. You want that to be symmetrical and stiff and nice and packed. Okay, so you want to symmetrically apply your material. So when you 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 can symmetric, so it'll be easier to symmetrically trim. And there's some really good people out there that can show you how to do that. Um, yeah, I try to do it, and I'm probably not the best. And make sure that you have a pretty symmetrical fly. And you know, and something else is like if you're like, uh, uh, I think the word's palmering. I've never used the technical fly tying term you know putting wrapping the the feathers around the hook like the hackle um like i used uh like a guinea uh a guinea uh oh and, uh, and that's something else you wrap the hackle from the front from the eye of the hook to the back of the hook and then you use some wire and then you wrap the wire to the front of the hook and you do that down but you want to you want to keep your uh your your you know when you're wrapping that stuff uh, you want to keep the, the the shiny part of the feather facing forward because you know you want to take advantage of that because you know bait so when you're pulling through the water that's folding back right that's folding back and um, you know so you have that shininess that's tapering back towards the tail so you you've got you know so it, it looks like a you know even a crawfish it's got some shininess about it so you want to do that to help. You want to make sure that you use your materials appropriate. Like put your shiny stuff, your shiny surface forward. Now there are applications where you don't, like if you got a big thick feather and you're palmering around the hook, 
and and you want to chug up some bubbles underneath the water well you might want to you know change it to where the curve of the feather is, is facing forward so you're like chugging some water up underneath the surface and that's fine too now, I mean you're deciding on what you need to tie in in, in, uh, in step two so uh, that that's gonna be part of it and that's gonna be the recipe for it so that that's kind of what you do uh, you just want the thing to be symmetrical and you want it to to uh, you know to work to work for you and in my my opinion is I've had them I've had the most success with flies that are very simple okay I've caught some decent sized fish on very simple flies like on my channel there's I have a I have a picture of a of a, a nice 18 inch speckled trout or a video and it's caught on a little bend back uh, I call it the bend back penny or bent penny because it's just this copper looking fly and it caught a nice trout first cast nice speckled trout and it was awesome and I, and I caught there's another video I have and this bass is probably like close to three pounds and I caught him on on like a wool head minnow very simple pattern take, take that one takes a while to, to tie just the nature of it but anyhow so uh, you know if you like this video man uh, please like subscribe hit the bell and uh, you know leave a comment below all right, thanks for watching.